I don't believe his death was natural because Charles Hamilton Houston had been praised by Supreme Court justices. Some of them had taught him in law school as to his brilliance. He had argued cases before the United States Supreme Court. He had thoroughly reorganized Howard University Law School and made it a real social laboratory for the training of black lawyers. And done all of that. He was a very activist lawyer, but not one who just simply went to the courtroom, but he was also out in the streets marching and all of that, aside from his brilliance in the courtroom itself. So he was in all uh, 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 my uh, 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 estimations, uh, certainly someone who I really uh, respected in the practice of law. He died, however, shortly after he filed a petition in the United Nations seeking relief for black folks in this country. Right after the United Nations was established, Hamilton's consciousness left the issues that he was dealing with in civil rights. And he recognized that at that moment, the liberation of black people really rested in the United Nations and attempted to get our case before the UN. Right after that, he mysteriously got ill, went in the hospital. People thought he was coming out, but he never did. That was the end of Charles Hamilton Houston. Right after that, Thurgood, who more than anything else is a faithful Mason, a member of the Masonic Order, very faithful. More than anything else, he was more faithful to the Masonic Order than anything else. Thurgood did something with Kenneth Clark which changed the whole history of black people because they presented evidence that they knew was false to the Supreme Court that then allowed the Supreme Court to say that black folks were so dumb that the only way that we could ever be rehabilitated would be in the presence of white folks which was Brown versus Board of Education because that's what Brown said. Now white folks are practicing social Darwinism. So now they got the bell curve and they're saying we're just so dumb that ne won't nothing help us. That they tried Brown and Brown didn't work. So now Charles Murray fin financed by the American Enterprise Institute a right-wing think tank whose presidents once was Bill Butcher, the head of Chase Manhattan Bank in New York, run by the Rockefellers, and is now a trustee of the American Enterprise Institute. The real issue is not Charles Murray, but who is financing Charles Murray. And what are their goals, and what are they intended? So we need to be a lot deeper than just being uh, uh, concerned about the report. The issue is who financed the project in the first place and why is Chase Manhattan or the president of Chase a key figure in the American Enterprise Institute. But going back to Brown versus Board of Education, the issue in Brown was not a question was not a question initially of the integration of schools. The issue in Brown initially was the equalization of schools. And then at the behest of a federal judge who asked them to change the issue, and they did, and in support of the issue of whether black people should be in white schools, 
they brought in Kenneth Clark, who had conducted two studies, and this is important for us in education. Kenneth Clark had conducted two scientific studies, one in Massachusetts with a sufficient pool of young people to be tested, the other one in Arkansas, the difference being that the young blacks in Massachusetts was in integrated surroundings. The young blacks in Arkansas was in segregated surroundings. And the question was, do blacks or blacks more adept intellectually in a segregated surrounding among their own or are they better off in an integrated surrounding? And his test, his scientific test showed that blacks in the segregated surrounding was better off than blacks in an integrated environment. Now, although he had that test under his belt, he went down to South Carolina and got a small sample of black children, gave them the doll test down in South Carolina without any reference to the scientific test he had done already, which showed that blacks in a segregated surrounding had greater self-esteem than they did in an integrated surrounding. Without mentioning that test at all, got an unscientific sample and concluded from that that black children hated themselves. And used that evidence in the United States Supreme Court to prove to the justices that unless we were around white people, we had no future. And that was Brown versus the Board of Education. Now, the Legal Defense Fund, which the vehicle that Thurgood used, its incorporation papers was done by Arthur Spingarn. He incorporated and the president was George Spingarn, who has now been identified as an agent for the United States government. Two other things. A sociologist by the name of Garner Myrtle wrote this report in the 40s, I think, The American Dilemma. What is interesting here is that report set the stage for the debate on race relations. That report was financed by the Carnegie Corporation, which operates hand in hand with the Rockefellers. And in addition to that, Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man was also financed by the Carnegie Corporation. And this is why he never wrote any other books but that one. He never wrote another book after that one. But that book was financed by the Carnegie Corporation to raise the issue or heighten the consciousness of race in America prior to the movement that was planned in the South. Vernon John's daughter was the protest leader as a high school student in Prince Edward County, which was one of the consolidated cases in Brown versus Board of Education. So Vernon John was in 
Alabama.